Now, the question that's tormenting us, why is George Clooney being blamed for trimming the profits of a men's grooming brand? We're going to find out in just a moment as we take a look through the business pages of all the Sunday papers with the broadcaster and businesswoman, Margaret Mantford, and the PR guru and co-founder of Seven Hills. He's Michael Heyman, MBE. Oh, and congratulations thank you very, thank on you very that, much. Michael. Thank you very good to see you. We're having such a good time in the green room. Now. I'm going to call you Mick and Mag. Mick. Kind of, kind of double, double act <laughs> yeah, there. Um, so Margaret, <laughs> well, come on, enlighten us. So what's George Clooney done? Well, apparently he grew a beard and so a lot of other people thought they would too, right? um, including Paxman. Whether he was trying to emulate Clooney, we, we don't know. But this has affected sales of razors worldwide. And there's actually a large uh, article it, further inside the, uh, the Telegraph, not just this little front page bit, um, with Will King, who's the king of shaves, oh, yeah, uh, who's yeah, developed yeah, this new, new razor, which apparently um, is supposed to glide uh, effortlessly across the stubble, um, presumably taking the stubble with it, um, based on catheter technology, yeah. actually. It's supposed to be... Yeah, well, we won't go into that. Didn't know that. No, we don't want yeah. to go into that. Um, but um, <laughs> we wondered whether, whether you were going to set a trip. Yes, we thought. <laughs> I've, done the, I've had the dabble. First, well, I've uh, done the dabble uh, with the holiday beard, but I don't really think it, it uh, kind of was too grey. Well, uh, well, mind you, Paxman got away with it. Yeah. Uh, but, but, I mean, has it had a serious effect? I mean, are we seeing... Or is it just one of those rather silly stories? Or has that had a real serious effect on the bottom line? I think it probably has had a bit of effect, or maybe the maybe there's just a trend, and that's part of it. And you can't yeah, say is. that that that's um, that's the cause, but uh, that there may be the effect. Indeed, okay. it's, it's the war of the shapes. I mean, he's a, he's a big. I mean, I know Will King very well. I mean, he's. Um, He's a, he's a man. He's a man for campaigning, and you know he's got sort of Gillette in his um, in his gaze. But actually, there is this other big social trend, which is we're becoming a, a hairier nation. Mm. I guess. I mean, people aren't shaving as we much see as they used to. A lot of younger men. Yeah. Doing, doing the film King. Another way of getting beard, keeping yeah. warm. Yeah. Presumably. But Paxman yeah. shared it off and said it was all so 2013. So maybe it's over now. So well, well, yeah. Well, that's it. New year, new opportunities. <laughs> Absolutely. Close yes. to shave. Okay. New razor. <laughs> now, um, your first story, Michael, is uh, retailers in fight back after super. Markets hit, and some of them had a pretty bad Christmas period. Didn't well, they? I know. I mean, I, I was just thinking about this. I mean, it feels like th this story is more changeable than the weather at the moment. I mean, one minute it's sort of dark clouds, and then it's a bit of blue skies. I mean, and I think that's partly because we are in this very, very interesting period where we're at the beginnings of an economic recovery. And of course, not all the stories are great. But whereas last week was very much about the sort of um, uh, the food supermarkets and, and showing some really sort of fairly sort of poor results, this week it's all about the retailers and what they're doing and what you're seeing is is that there's a battle on the high street but I think the most important trend has got to be the online revolution yeah. where the UK is the number one online trading nation in the world for consumer purchases and those that don't get that are going to get left behind I mean there was particularly that growth though wasn't there of click and collect, whereas, you know, if, you, if you're not in, you still get it. You don't have to go down the sorting office or ring up UPS or DHL, whoever it is, and say, come on another day. Mm. Yeah. Huge, huge growth in that. And it makes you wonder what's going to happen to all these enormous out-of-town hypermarkets, mm. because if people are going to just want a <coughs> warehouse to go and pick up something they, they've ordered online. And, and maybe the high street will start to, to come back as we get smaller retailers with fresh produce that people still want to go and by themselves, mm, yeah. and all the big stuff will get uh, ordered online. Never not interesting, all these retailing trends. Uh, Margaret, you've got uh, this story about uh, the Americans, another British brand taking a big bite of uh, Hovis. Another, yeah. another really old British brand. Yeah. I mean, 125 years of I bread wondered making. If, I wondered if it was that old. I know the advertising <laughs> tries to make out. Well, yeah. so yeah. it must be true. It was invented <laughs> by some kind of key <laughs> marketing so, man like him about yeah, 30 yeah. years ago. Well, it certainly was, uh, was in the 70s, and that's practically no, 125 years ago, history, isn't it? Yeah. Ancient yeah. history. But it, it, it's a bit of a shame if you think that, that another Another old style, long standing British brand is going to America. And this wonderful photograph of um, Alec Gore sitting that, in between some the, actresses yeah. and models, um, none of whom ever look as if they've eaten a slice of bread in <laughs> no, their that's lives. That's right, they absolutely don't. And he's quite a character, the, this guy. But I think it, it comes into another interesting fact, which is that, you know, how brands sort of go up and down and what you see is that other sort of bread brands like Kings Mill have been getting it nailed on gluten-free and all sorts of other sorts of things and, and Hovis is right for 
for a for a makeover and by the looks of the, of this guy he's a bit of a character pro a professional poker player lots of sort of things that he's sort of bringing mm. i guess to the table and and Hovis will be shaken up mm. long way to go from those ads where they were <laughs> yes, up the hills going and down up the dale cobble street yeah. on, on yes. a very heavy uh, steel bike uh, michael you got this story i mean it's much discussed of course about um, wages and of course wages been lagging in inflation for a long time even yeah. a treasury conservative thinks the minimum wage could go up yeah i, I think in many ways this is the story of the weekend, which is the low pay commission are about to go into three days of purda where they're going to consider whether the sort of living wage needs to rise and whether Hold companies... On, we, this is minimum wage because well, they're, 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 well, they are they're, different. They're, 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 sort of, they're the minimum conflated. wage is statutory. That's right, the they're, conflated. they're conflated into, into two things. But the minimum wage, you're right, the, the, the minimum wage, is about, which currently stands about £6.31, I think it is, is whether it goes up. And what you have is, a, is probably some level of consensus in business that it's, it's ripe for change. But certainly not a consensus that it could go up to some of the sort of levels that some of the um, some of the politicians are talking about. Um, I think that um, you know what you've got is a very very mixed picture in the UK economy at the moment, where London could probably take it, but there are large parts of the UK economy, and certainly many people in small businesses, that will be very very concerned at this stage to changes in the minimum wage. Because it is a huge political debate with Labour shifting their attack as the economy picked up, Margaret, to mm. that this cost of living. Who is feeling the benefits of recovery? Well, an increase in the in the minimum wage would make a difference to that political argument. It would. It would also make a difference, they say, or some say, to the benefits bill because uh, according to the Institute of Fiscal Studies, for every pound the minimum wage goes up, 50p mm. is saved on benefits because, of course, the minimum wage is not a living wage and an awful lot of people earning the minimum wage are also getting tax credits or, or other forms mm -hmm. of income support from the Treasury. So, so in a way, the minimum having a low minimum wage is subsidising particular employers, um, but the government isn't having a choice in which employers it's yeah. subsidising in that way. Yeah, but it's interesting is that, the, you know, in, in a way it's also a fairly healthy debate because I think it shows that, you know, business is going beyond just the survival point and actually some of these social uh, debates come in, social cost debates come on, it's as a what is acceptable and, you know, and I, I think that um, there is there is some acknowledgement that um, this, this is probably a needle that needs to be pushed um, a little bit up. OK, and on that note, we'll end it. Thank you very much indeed, Michael, Margaret, make and match. Very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed for taking us through the uh, business page of the Sunday papers there.